So you're going to need a caliper piston compression tool, a hammer, a pry bar or a flathead screwdriver, a wire brush or sandpaper, a ratchet, uh, two socket sizes, a 13 millimeter or 17 millimeter. Um, you can also use 13 millimeter or 17 millimeter wrenches. I do prefer a ratchet though. Uh, a bungee cord or a strap of some sort, some thread locker, some anti seize, some disc brake quiet, some caliper lube, brake cleaner, and your parts. All right, so first I'll show you everything. These are the caliper bolts. These are 13 millimeters. That's the ones you've been taken off. And then for the bracket, that's 17 millimeter. Those are those two there. And then if the rotor is stuck, I'll talk about that after, there's that bolt there. You can thread something into it. But first, of course, you got to take off your caliper. So we'll start with the 13 millimeters. Let's take those out. They just broke nice and loose, no problems at all. Um, there is a little uh, thing there where if you look on the other side where you can use a wrench to grab it if you need to, but I didn't find any need to at all. Now you can see this caliper moves freely and actually does come off very easily. But if it is stuck, you can use a pry bar to separate it. Uh, you can see you use that there and you can kind of pull at it. But this, in this case here, nice and easy, just came right out. All right, so now you get to use a bungee cord and, and kind of, uh, or you can use a string or anything, a hanger, whatever, and just fix that onto the spring. Um, that'll prevent it from moving or damaging. You don't want to da damage your brake line, so you want to make sure it's secure. So I kind of hung it on the strut, then brought the bungee cord, uh, very annoyingly, <laughs> over, and then hooked them on the other side. There we go. And now it's all secure. It's not going anywhere. No problems. Now we're going to go after these 17 millimeter bolts here. There's one here and there's one below. We're going to loosen those out. There we go. Now these ones are much harder to do than the caliper bolts. So I actually used a hammer and shocked it free. You can also use a breaker bar, spray it down. And it doesn't hurt to spray it down with WD-40 or penetrating fluid or something like PB Blaster. Um, in this case here, I just used the hammer to shock it. Um, you can also turn the wheel. Uh, this actually, if you turn it so that the rotor is facing outward, you can actually get more leverage and be able to get to it. But uh, for me, as you can see, just using the hammer, just released it. Whatever works for me. Part of this is because there's thread locker on there, so that's why they're a little bit harder to get out. Uh, same idea here. We're going to go with that bolt. Actually, as I rewatch this now, I realize I probably should just use the, the breaker and gone with it. But hey, I went with the hammer. So breaker bar will work as well. Or, ex or a bar at the end of the ratchet. That works too. Okay, we'll pull that out. And again, note the red markings on there. That's from thread locker. As soon as that come out, that rotor is going to blop. I'm just hearing the bracket. It's going to fall right off. There you go. All right, so now, as you can see, this rotor can't come off. So you can either thread a uh, like a, a bolt through there, through that little opening. It's got some threads in there, and you can release it that way, or you can use a hammer. For me, most times I just use a hammer. A couple good hits, boom, broke right free, right? Pull that right out. And you can see all the rust and everything in there. That's what held it in place. All right, so now we're going to clean up these areas here. That's where your sandpaper or wire brush will come into play again. And you just kind of clean it up. You just want to get off any rust, sediment, buildup, road salt, whatever is collected in there. You just want as flat a surface as possible. Same here. Just going to clean it up now. Here it looked like a little bit around the hub there was remnants of some sort of... Uh, uh, you know, anti seize or something, but most of it was gone, so it rusted on there. So we're going to put our own after. I'll show you that. But for now, just clean it up. I won't show you the whole thing. You get the idea. And I have a drain pan underneath. I'm spraying it down with brake cleaner. You can see it just run off. Uh, there you see the drain pan there. So we're going to take out the pads. If they give you any trouble, like this one is here, good little hit with the hammer. Boom. 
Problem solved. <laughs> All right, so you can see our worn pads there. Note where the, the squeal sensor is. That's always on the inner pad there. Note where it is, where it goes for comparison and for reinstallation. So these are your new pads here. You want to compare, always compare your stuff. Make sure it all matches up. Make sure the, the points where it goes to the clip, where the brake pads sit in the clips and stuff all lines up. Squeal sensors line up, things like that. Obviously the pad material is going to be thicker on the new pad, so don't compare that. <laughs> but compare everything else. Make sure everything else lines up. You can see the squeal sensor there. Same with your rotor too. Compare rotors. Make sure that they all line up. Make sure, you know, little things like it has the hole. You know, the width is the same. Some cars, this car doesn't have it, but some cars have options on their brakes. Or sometimes you can get the wrong part. So now I put the brake rotor on the wrong way. Uh, that is intentional. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we're going to spray it down with some brake cleaner and clean it off. Uh, just so you know, when brakes are shipped, rotors, they are covered in a coating that prevents rust or anything like that, uh, contaminants and so on. You want to clean that off. See the little bit of smudge on there? You want to clean that off before you install. So I take off the rotor and now I'm going to put the anti-seize around just the inner part of the hub. Uh, some people coat the whole thing. I find the biggest issue really comes from this inner part. That's where it sticks the most. So that's where I'm putting it. And then you mount that. doesn't matter how the rotor mounts. You can mount it right on there. And then I'm just going to use a lug nut. Just place it on the lower part to hold it in. That just holds it in place while I work. Then of course, take it out when you're done. Now I'm going to spray down the front and use a clean rag to once again clean the front end. I'm not too concerned about where the it mounts to the rim, but uh, you know if you want to give it a quick clean off, by all means, doesn't hurt. Main thing though is clean off the rotor first. All right, so now we're going to take off these brake pipe clips. Just going to get our pry bar or flathead, pop them right out. All right, now we're going to clean areas like here. Uh, we're also going to clean where the brake uh, bracket, sorry, the brake caliper bracket bolts go and where the caliper pins go. I'm just going to give them like scuffs to get off any rust, sediment, buildup, you know, stuff I talked about before. So I want to have as smooth a surface as possible. Here, though, you will have to work quite a bit because there's always going to be a lot of buildup on here. And you want to smooth this out as much as possible. You want as flat a, matting, a mating surface as possible. Just goes with it. I mean, if you live in some areas where rust is not so much an issue, then this will actually be minimal. You'll have some rust, but you won't have a lot of road salt or anything. But other areas where you encounter winters and road salts and everything, this is always going to be an issue. So I just put it in and uh, give it a quick spray with some brake cleaner. Get off as much as possible. All right. Now, I actually already greased this pin here, and it's going to go in, but I'll show you the other pin. It's all the same, really. You can see it just slips in, and it just kind of grabs on. It's got like a little bit of a, a retainer on there. So you got to pull it back to get it out of the little rubber seal, and pull that right out. You're gonna, obviously, this is the second clip. You do the same for the first, sorry, second pin. You do this for the first pin, too. And you just wipe it clean. You can see how it looked all yellow and black and gunky before and now it's nice and silver. You want to clean that all up. Get as much off as possible. And look for things like scoring and stuff too. You want to make sure it's not seizing up in there but you should be good. Okay and in this case here again same thing. You don't want to be too light with it. You want to make sure you coat it pretty well but you don't want to put too much either. You want a good thick coat uh, kind of like how this looks here. But you don't want to overdo it. Too much is not good either. It can actually seep through the boot or clog it up. If it seeps through the boot, it allows dirt to get in and then seize it. But if you put not enough, then it, over time it'll wear out or it'll heat up and it'll seize as well. So you want to make sure it's just like what you saw there. As soon as you push it in, then you just move it around and make sure it just moves freely. There's no binding or anything inside. Now we're going to put the brake pad clips in. You want to make sure they're lined up and you want to make sure they're completely even and flush with the uh, the caliper bracket. So you can see I line it up there. 
and we're going to push and make sure it's nice and fitted and flush. So you see how it's sticking up there? You don't want that. So sometimes you have to give it a light tap of the hammer. In this case, you should be able to just kind of push it in, apply a little bit of force, and it just clicked right in. There you go. And you can see it's mounted nice and flat. It's not sitting high or anything like that, and it's mounted nice and even. And you do the same for the top as well. So you can see I put the thread locker on, and we're just going to put our bracket back in. I want to put the bolt in. Now these are going to go to 68 to 81 foot-pounds. That's the range. A lot of cars now come with brake uh, break bolt ranges. Actually, a lot of things like suspension components everything have ranges, no longer a specific number. So I tend to just, you know, line up to roughly in the middle. But uh, in this case, this car, again, 68 to 81 is for these caliper uh, caliper bolts. It's going to tighten those up, make sure it's nice and secure. And you can go ahead and tighten those up all the way. But never go to the uh, all the way in the bottom and tighten all the way up. I normally kind of make sure it's all snug first, and then I'll do the final tighten. This just allows it to kind of, you know, seat a little better. There you go. All right. And now these are the points here where the brake pad will meet the clips. Um, so you want to grease those up too. Put some caliper lube will work just fine. So just hit those contact points up. Make sure again, same thing. Decent coat, not too little, not too much. Too much will gum it up or it can make a mess. Too little will kind of defeat the whole purpose. So uh, yeah, you want to make sure it's got a good kind of even coat on there. Now, you'll see how this part here, right? See that? That's a kind of a spring load. So you can't just push your pad in from the front like you would normally because of the spring load. So you actually have to push the pad in from the side, push it in, like, like you see I'm pushing it inward and to like down, and then I'll push it in. So you got to kind of push against the spring and then push it in. And you got to do that for the inner and the outer. It just pushes against that spring-loaded clip there. And notice where the squeal sensor is there. Again, same thing, just kind of work it in. And squeal sensors, most 99% of the cars I work on, I've seen squeal sensors always on the inner. So keep that in mind as well. That's where it's going. But hopefully you've noted that at the beginning. Okay, and they're nice and flush now. So now we're just going to put some disc brake quiet on onto the shims. This kind of helps with any vibration or noise. You can put caliper lube or grease too. I like disc brake quiet, but just saying, even even if it's like high temperature grease or again the brake, uh, the caliper lube, all that works as well. So we're going to clean up these areas here. So clean up along the piston, and we're going to clean up where the caliper. Uh, uh, bolts where they kind of connect onto the caliper, it's um, to the caliper bracket. So watch out for the boot. You don't want to damage the boot. So just be careful when you're doing that. Just give it a nice scuff on there. Just getting off any sediment. It doesn't have to be nice and shiny and new. Just got to be as clean as possible. Give it a quick spray down with some brake cleaner. All right, so now we're going to push this in. Now, uh, you, before you get started on this, make sure, as you said, I pointed up, check your brake fluid. Make sure if it has been filled up or topped up, you do want to make sure you siphon some out if needed. Um, that's either if the dealership's done it or if you've topped it up. But if you have never done it, then technically this should just kind of um, push fluid back through. So now we're, I'll use your uh, your caliper piston compression tool and we're going to press that out whatever you're using I like this ratcheting one and you want to make sure you're keeping an eye on the boot you want to make sure it doesn't bind up or doesn't anything weird doesn't happen with it doesn't tear or anything so, so I'm kind of keeping an eye on it as I go and yeah you're just kind of making sure it goes nice and flush it's really kind of the best I'm just going to back it out a little bit there you go it's looking good you want to make sure it can clear the pads so now we're just going to reinstall our caliper onto our bracket and over our pads there. 
and we're going to put in back our 13 millimeter bolts. Now, in case you're wondering, the torque specifications on those are 20 to 22 foot pounds, so much le much less of a range. Don't know why they don't just say 21 foot pounds, <laughs> but the range is 20 to 22. So, yeah, that's where you want to go with it there. Not a lot of torque at all. And always a good idea whenever you do this stuff, hey, double check the car as well. Um, you know, after, let's say, you drive X amount of kilometers, you do a quick maintenance, pull off your wheels and you always double check, make sure your connections are good. But, uh, you know, as long as you do the proper torque specs, you should be okay. Gonna get my ratchet now. We're gonna go on those bolts. All right, lower one as well. There we go. I'm gonna recheck the top one. I never tighten one all the way first. I always do one. Then tighten the top of the other one and then go back and you're all set. So you may be wondering how you do the setting for the brakes. So that's just a matter of first, making sure you're in a safe area, make sure there's not, not a lot of traffic or anything like that. Cause you're gonna have to be doing some accelerating and light braking just to set in the brakes. Um, so that's a matter of accelerating up to about 20 to 30 kilometers an hour. It's roughly 15 to 20 miles per hour and then braking, and then when you brake, you don't just come to a dead stop. Um, you allow the car to just stop down to a couple miles per hour, a couple kilometers per hour, and then you start accelerating again. Um, light acceleration, very light acceleration, don't be flooring it or anything like that. And then once you get to 20, 30 kilometers an hour, 15, 20 miles, brake a little bit again. Again, don't sit on the brakes. You especially don't wanna to come to, try and avoid coming to a stop, or if you do, put it in park and let your foot off the brake if something happens you need to, because as you're sitting in the brakes, if you stay one spot with the brakes as they're sitting in, the heat that could be generating could cause some early warping or damage to the brakes, especially if you're doing a lot of brake and stop, brake and stop. So you wanna make sure that you're, um, you know, you're avoiding that for this first little bit. So here you see right now, I'm just gonna get up right about 20 kilometers an hour here. I'm breaking down. Just, uh, just under 10 there. I'm gonna go back again. See what I'm doing there? Now, uh, once you do this a few times, you'll feel the brakes actually become firmer. You'll notice the braking actually improves. Instead of just going out and start driving right away, you'll notice an improvement in the brakes. Um, once this is done, for the first 60 miles, 100 kilometers particularly, do make sure you're being very, very easy on the brakes. Uh, no heavy braking, anything like that. Um, uh, just so that it gives you some extra uh, burnishing time and extra time to kind of work the brakes in. After that, drive how you normally drive. Still be safe, you know, but drive how you normally drive. And then you're all set. As you can see right now, I can already feel the improvements in the brakes. It's all, all operating much better. Very, very firm. That's all you need. Thank you everyone for watching. I do appreciate all the support out there. Uh, don't forget to throw a like on that video if it helps you, if you found the information useful, anything like that, make sure you like it. Don't forget to subscribe, help the channel grow, and hit the notification if you want to see more of my videos. If you dislike the video, that's okay, no problem at all, but don't be a troll, all right? Uh, make sure you put why in the comments. I mean, maybe I missed something. Maybe I got something wrong. Maybe there's something you feel better or you didn't like how I filmed. Whatever it is, put it in there. I make these videos to help people out, so I can only make it better if I get the feedback, but I need the feedback. Just don't be trolling, all right? Uh, otherwise, if you have any other comments, feel free to do so. I answer questions whenever I can. Um, if you want to add something on there, if you have a helpful tip that maybe I didn't cover, I didn't even know about, make sure to put that in the comments as well. I want to thank everyone, and I will see you all next video.